Thank you for your power. Thank you for your wonder in us. Thank you for all that you have been doing. To you be all glory. To you be all honor. To you be all adoration in the name of Jesus. Father, as we come before you today, I ask that the heaven open upon us in the name of Jesus. Heavens of mercy, heavens of favor, heavens of lifting, heavens of revelation, heavens of divine encounter. My Lord, my God, let it open upon us in the name of Jesus. Today, beyond our imagination, more than what we think, more than what we plan, Father, let heaven open upon us in the name of Jesus. Do great things, greater things beyond our preparation, greater things beyond our dream, greater things beyond our vision. Father, I pray that today you will do it in our midst in the name of Jesus. And at the end, Father, let all glory, all honor, all adoration to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I say, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, I welcome each and every one of us. Those of us who are online, you are all welcome in the name of Jesus. If you are just joining us for the very first time, my name is Ariola Oreolua, and uh, this is Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network is an online prayer ministry where we come together in the place of prayer to pray unto the living God. We come together online to pray unto the living God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. We pray unto the living God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. And hear me, testimony flows every blessed day. Amen. And I know that as you join us today, your own testimony to the Lord call it forth in the name of Jesus. I say your own testimony to your marital testimony, the testimony of your business, the testimony of your career, the Lord will bring it to manifestation today in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will bring it into manifestation in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Once again, I welcome each and every one of us to today's day 19 of this month, day 19 of this program. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. This is prayer avalanche. Prayer avalanche run three times in a year. The month of March, the month of July, and the month of November. March, July, November. By the grace of God, this is March, year 2023 edition, and the theme is New Beginning. New Beginning. Why New Beginning? Because God wants to start a new thing in our life, a new thing in your home, a new thing in your marriage, a new thing in your business, a new thing in your career. Praise the Lord. So once again, I welcome every one of you in the name of Jesus. Before we go, while I was, early this morning, while I was meditating, and uh, praying concerning today, the Lord gave me a message. Three, four, five, seven. The Lord gave me a message. Seven of them that I should deliver. It's not today. It's not like the other Sunday. It's not the, like the normal Sunday. Today is not like the normal. The here, Mr. Yama. There's no teaching today, and uh, there's no prayer today. God just said, deliver it and proclaim my word. Amen. Seven messages, seven prophecy, seven revelations, seven messages, seven revelations, seven prophecy, seven prophecy, seven message from the Lord to every one of you. So the Lord said, deliver them and proclaim my word. That is what we are going to do today. 
praise it a lot. But before we do that, I want to say a big thank you to every one of you who support this vision with your seed, with your tithe, with your offering. It's the vision of God. I keep saying it. It's a vision of God. If not the vision of God, I won't be. I will not be on it now. Every blessed day, uh, we pray. We. I'm not sure there's a day that we don't come online. If we don't come online for uh, the online, we have prayer to pray every blessed day. Praise the Lord. Every Thursday, hours of mercy. Every Friday, we have communal service and we have uh, net Fiji. Every Saturday, the children prayer meeting 5 p.m. and the whole family will come online 8 p.m. to pray. Every Sunday, uh, we have our Sunday service. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is only the remaining we come online to pray. And those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there will be one thing or the other. Praise the Lord for us to do. But uh, hear me, it is because it is the vision of God, the mandate of God, the assignment of God. That is why God is helping us to see come online every blessed day. And God make it to be possible because of the support that the ministry is getting from every one of you. Finance. The very first um, prayer avalanche, the very first prayer avalanche, that is November 2019, November 2019, Ephesians 6, uh, 19. Ephesians 6, 19, the team, every kind of prayer, November 2019. The old expenses for that month is what we are using just, it's not even enough for a week now. <laughs> it's not enough for a week. Amen. But God is helping us to keep coming and uh, as we are coming, there are testimony from all over the world. Amen. I pray for every one of you whom God is using to support this ministry. Not only from where you are expecting help, from the least place where you don't expect from, the Lord will raise help for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will raise help for you. 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 Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where come my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I pray again for every one of you that God is using to support this ministry. Apart from those of us who are every week, every day, every month, we send in our, our uh, financial resources to support this ministry. Many of you, you pray for us every day. I have a team, I don't know them all over the world. They come together praying for this ministry. Your prayer is doing a lot. Your prayer is making impact. Your prayer is, make, is having effect. Praise it Lord. I have some people, they encourage. Every day they send message. Every day they send message. Every day they call. Every day they send message. Here I means I am. Even for those of you who are always online. When you come online, you make even your ordinary amen that you make online, that you that comment it have a it have effect because it makes me to know that yes you are there you are receiving it it encourage for every one of you no matter the group you belong to those that pray for us those that carry the spiritual body those that god is using to finance this project this assignment i pray for you help of god will locate you this season in the name of jesus the help of god will locate you 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 i don't think i know up to five i don't think i know up to let me say three percent Yes, we talk online. Sometimes when we are chatting, when we are talking, it's like we have known ourselves for ages, for long. But it's just online that we know ourselves. We are Many of you, you are totally outside my country. But God brought us together and as a family. Hear me, sir. Hear me, ma'am. From that quarters that you don't know people, from that places that you don't know people, and you must be helped in that area. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. Let the help of God arise for you in the name of Jesus. My mother is in Nigeria, precisely on those states, somewhere in those states, Nigeria. I'm a son. I'm in another area, Lagos State, Nigeria. But for those of you whom God is using to help God's assignment in my hand, you are totally in another environment. I want to pray for your children. 
when wherever your children find themselves wherever your children find themselves this is where i find myself doing the work of god praying the good network lagos state nigeria my mother is at another location and every one of you nobody know my mother praise it the lord wherever your children find themselves I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. Every one of you, you are also a son, a daughter to somebody. The help of God will be available for you in the name of Jesus. A big thank you to every one of you. The Lord will not depart from your tabernacle in the name of Jesus. That's number one. Number two today is March 19. March 19. I don't know in your country. I believe in your own country too. Today is March 19. But in Nigeria, today is Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day. To every mother's in the house. To every mother's in the house. To every mother to be in the house. To every mother in the house. To every mother's to be in the house. I pray for you. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm his word in your life. That good prophecy, that good revelation that you hold on to. By faith that you hold on to. That you do not allow anything to shake from you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. And I pray for every mother in the house. Either you are a grandma. You are great grandma, great great grandma, or you are mother, and you are about to become a mother. Somebody that will give back to children. No matter the category, I pray for you. Your labor over your children will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Your labor will not be in vain. 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 In the name of Jesus. Today is prophetic declaration for a new beginning. Because God gave me seven declarations, seven prophecy for seven peoples. I don't know the group that you are going to belong. So let me start from that one, from that angle. Today is Mother's Day. Every mother is in the house. That pain, that agony over your children, over your family. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. It shall not be vain in the name of Jesus. The Lord will reward you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every of your heart desire concerning your children that you are crying unto the Lord. Lord, when will you establish this for my children, for my son, for my daughter? Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. I pray for you. By the power of the Almighty God, the Lord will establish it in the name of Jesus. It's not easy to be a wife, not to talk of to be a mother. I, I, I keep saying this. That the responsibility of the whole family is upon the shoulder of the mother, upon the shoulder of the wife, not the husband. Let's 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 be sincere, let's face reality. You know why? Either it falls to the left or to the side, whatever the outcome of every decision in the family, the mother is always at the receiving end. Either it fall to the left or to the right. Every decision that we make in the family, every decision that you are taking in that family, the outcome, the mother is always at the receiving end. The mother is always at the receiving end. If it's good, forget it. That uh, the father will claim that, uh, you see my son there. Ah, the father only claim the title. The father only claim the honor. But the bread, <laughs> the bread, go to the mother. When I was small, before I grew up, whenever my brother, my sister, whenever they, they travel, you know, they are always they are outside the, the state, some of them outside the nation. Whenever they come around, those who are married among them, whenever they come around, before they will, before, you know, as they are coming and everybody are crashing, uh, screaming, shouting, hey, welcome, 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 welcome sir, welcome, sir. They, they will carry a special bag. And in one way or the other, they will sneak it in into my mother's room. And they will drop it there. And they will give signal. Nobody should touch it. Nobody should 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. It belongs to the mother. Then it come, ah, daddy, welcome, sir. This and that, they greet the daddy. When they are going, they give daddy something. Whatever they are going to give to daddy, mommy takes times two. And that one that they are going to give to daddy, he is still going back to the mother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every good thing, the mother is always at the receiving end. And if it turns out to be the opposite, the mother is going to be at the receiving end. Do you see your son? Do you see now? That it has become the son of that mother. It has become the son of that woman. Not our son again. You see what your son has become. You see what your son has become. <laughs> so the mother is at the receiving end. If a man has money, have the resources, and because of one reason or the other, he now overpampered one of the sons, one of the children, and that one spoiled. Men, we are so active, we are so, God created us, God wired us like that. Before we know it, men, we are the one that spoiled that child. The moment the, guy, the, the, the child got spoiled, what are we going to do? We will switch to another child. We pick another child, the one that is making it, the one that is not spoiled, we, we pick that one. And that one that we spoil, now we now become your son. Do you see your son? We are the one that spoil it, spoil him. We won't say we are the one again. You see what your son has become. If you are responsible, if you are there, if you are there to correct him or her at the right time, will she become this? But it is the father that spoil it, that spoil uh, that child. So do you see, either the outcome is good or the outcome is bad. It's always the mother that is always at the receiving end. So that is why whenever I come online and we are talking about couple, I always try to lay emphasis and face the side of the mother. You saw that men are good. Ah, good care. Oh, men it does. Please forgive me. Good is, is not in the dictionary of any man. Somebody say, what about you? Did I say I'm a semtech? Come and ask my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good. There is nothing good in the dictionary of any man. If you are looking for a man that is good, you will, you, you will belong. I know you, you just manage us. <laughs> Where is my wife? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, my attention is always on women because of what I have seen that the way I have seen them, that they labor over their home, they will labor over the man, they will labor over the marriage, they will labor over the children. So, two wrongs will never make good. Two wrongs. If the man is wrong, and the wife now want to repel, or the wife want to do the same thing, it will not make right. So, that is why I always focus on women. If men, especially African men, African men will not tell you sorry. African men, if you are waiting for your husband to tell you sorry, it is wrong. You will wait the eternity. We will not tell you sorry, including me. The ego, African ego is there. Permit me. We will not tell you sorry. Even when we are wrong, we still want to prove that, yes, we are the man of the house. It will not. So if you want to prove it, it will not make right. And at the end of the day, something will go wrong. And when something goes wrong, the woman at the end of the day will, all, will be at the receiving end. So why not let's do something that will give us a positive result at the receiving end. So it's not, please, let's, let's get it right. Whenever I'm online and I have to do with couple and it's like I'm laying emphasis on women. I know your labor. I perceive your labor. I can feel it. The very first, our very first child, that was the day I made covenant with God. There's nothing my wife will do that I will not forgive her. Dear me, what my wife will do tomorrow, next year, that I never know. The day we have our first child, I, I told God, Daddy, that this woman, as long as I live, I forgive her whatever sin she's going to. It's not that we will not argue. It, up to today, if she do something wrong, I'm just going to tell her you are wrong, and I will stand by it, you are wrong. But the area of forgiveness, why? When she was laboring, put into bed, I was there, I saw the pain, I saw the agony. So when, after the child came out and they were expecting, waiting for the placenta to come out, and I saw her on, ble, on bed like a dead person, lifeless. Ha! Ah, I can't withstand it. And I asked myself, is this what women pass through? 
And a sister, where's my wife? If you still remember, uh, one of our family friends was with us at that time. Sister Bisi by name. May the Lord God bless that uh, sister wherever she is in the name of Jesus. She was with me. She laughed. She said, yes, that is what we passed through. And I feel like crying for my mother. I'm the last born. So I feel like crying for my mother. I said, is this what women pass through? She said, yes. That is what we pass through. So that day I said, if this is what women pass through. <sighs> so please, ma, all the mothers in the house, you know, pray in the good network. I love you. And I will always celebrate you. My prayer for you today that you are we are celebrating Mother's Day. Over your husband, over your home, over your marriage, your labor will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. And those, those of us who are coming as a mother, you are believing God for fruit of the womb. And you, tomorrow, next year, this year, next year, you become a mother one day. Your labor shall not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Your labor will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. My wife, my second mother, <laughs> your labor over me, over the children, over the family, over this ministry, will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Yesterday was fantastic. Amen. Please, when we are coming next week, let's come with a bottle of wine. Wine, original one. If you like, buy expensive one. Praise it Lord. Next week, Saturday, we are having communion. What kind of communion? On Saturday, not Friday. Saturday, new wine in our marriage. So you come with that bottle of wine. Amen. New one, eh, original one. Say so, amen. We will bless it and everybody in the family will take it. And from that day, write it down. You begin to see the expression, the, 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 the confirmation, amen, of new wine, new joy in your home in the name of Jesus. My wife, thank you for that yesterday. But there's something you said. said she said it more than three or four times. And I asked one of us online. And she said, yes, no, if not, let's go. I said, give them money. Give us money. Uh -uh. As if she was angry with me. Give us money. And if you give us money, don't ask for change. Ah, okay. I will not ask for change again. Okay. Amen. Since I said that we should give you money, am I right? <laughs> Amen. My wife, she started saying, give us money. Give your wife money. Uh, Mrs. Kira, we should give you money. Give us money. Give us money. Give Dave, Mr. David Kibel, give your wife money. <laughs> and when you give her money, don't ask for change. We don't ask for change. You. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Was so fantastic. But please, uh, please, man, before I deliver to this message, two or three more to contribute to what my wife said yesterday. Let's learn to manage ourselves, husband and wife. We grew up in different environment. We grew up in different environment. We grew up in different environment. And our environment, that environment that you grew up from, is part of who you are today. My father is somebody who, when he's walking, he's walking fast as like a military man. So every one of us, we grow up that way. If you do something wrong, my father will say, come, because he's going to flog you. And because I don't want him to flog him, I will begin to run. And that man will run after me. You want to run? Yeah, run. There was a day, I ran from the house to the second street, to the third street, to the fourth street. And my father was running after me with his cane. Yes, you hear me. There's no child of my father that will not know how to run because when we are going in the farm the man will be walking fast 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 before you know you just branch one forest before you know a branch if you miss it if you miss it you have gone <laughs> you have gone because in forest there's no track road there and before you know it turn to another place before you know it turn to another place so for you to keep to that to him and not miss the road you just have to be running the man is walking but you are running all of us will be running so we grew up that way. So when I marry my wife, you know, Lagos girl, she, she was born and bred in Lagos. And when she's going, she's going smart, she's going. Ah, I'll be looking at what is the problem? Madam, walk now. We'll be walking. Ah, I will look at her, she's far away, like three steps. What is the problem? Can't you walk smart? So I will wait again. She will join me. Before we take two steps, she's. Ah, I will be looking at her. What's the problem of this one? Can't you walk? I don't know, I'm not walking. I'm running. <laughs> I'm not walking, I'm running. So who is at fault? Who is at fault? She grew up to take it easy. But me, I grew up. Eh, it's my blood. Jiki, 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 jiki. <laughs> Amen. So if my wife want me to come down to her level, ha, she will kill me. Oh. 
And if I want my wife to come to my level, I will drag her to death because she was not formed like that. So what is the solution? We have to come to the middle. My wife, sit forward. All right, stay a little bit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I now learn to control myself because we always have argument, we always fight on the road. So I know what the, what is way out. Okay, let us stay one step front. So when she stay one step front, so we are talking, we'll be walking. So when I see that my step is a little bit faster than our own, I control myself again. <laughs> Praise you, the Lord. I'm born inside, I'm born to a family that everything you just have to, when you are eating yourself, you rush. You rush, everything rush, 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 rush. I see you are going to rush here. As I said, my wife, eh? She, uh uh. <laughs> then you must say, uh uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Lagos girl, Lagos babe. Uh, but me, I'm not Lagos babe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is the way out? I need to give room for her. And she too also have to, if not, it will not work out. So please, uh, please, man, let's learn to tolerate ourselves and let's learn to give room. Let's learn to give room. See yourself that you are not perfect and see the other party to that. If the two of you see yourself that you are not perfect, it will, it will go a long way to manage ourselves. Then the next one, she mentioned communication. Let's talk, you. Let's talk. Men, let us talk. We don't talk. Yes, I know. Because when we are angry, we don't want to fight. So we try to withdraw. But when we draw, you don't talk. It's, 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 tomorrow is going to be a problem. Also, some wife, they bottle it up. No, it's not good. Let's talk. My father died 11 years ago at the age of 109 or 108. 109. At the age of 109. I'm the last born of my mother. And at that time, I think we, have, we already have our second. Yes, we already. You are pregnant of the third. When my father died. Me as the last born of my mom, my wife was pregnant of the third child at that time. So you can imagine. We have we have some of the grandchildren that are older than me, grandchildren older than me. So where I'm going is this: when my father died, before she died for almost about ten years or so, she he was left. The two of them were together. Me in a far in a far place. The two of them in a far place. If they don't talk, why do I see young? When they grow up, the space, the gap will be there. I'm talking to men. If you don't talk and befriend your wife now, when you grow old, your wife will abandon you and tell you that I want to go and take care of the grandchildren. They call it Omugo in a, a yes, my wife, uh, my, my daughter, my son put to bed, my daughter in law put to bed. I want to, to go and take care. If your if you have five children, this this three months, the wife, your wife travel to go and take care of this one. The next uh, three months, the next three months, the next three months, ah, you will suffer. You will suffer. But if you learn to manage yourself and blend now, now. At your old age, I'm talking to men. At your old age, your wife will be there. When we have our second child, our second child, my mother was sick. So my elder sister, Mrs. Ajayi, brought her to Lagos to take care of her. So the second, less than a two weeks, the, the second week, less than, it's not up to eight days. My mother was, she was giving them trouble that I'm going back home. And they say, the, you still have an appointment with your doctor. The doctor gave you like uh, seven days. Uh, go through this. The test that we run, they gave us like one week. We, one of the tests, we have not received the result. The, my mother said, no, I'm going back. My sister said for me, I went to the house. And my sister said, so she called my brother in, uh, in London. So they put it on speaker. And they said, my brother said, call Lore, let Lore go and talk to your, talk to his mother. And I said, is it now your own mother? He said, Oga, go and talk to her. Because they believe that that woman will listen to me. I entered the room, the woman, my mother was doing it. I entered the room, said, ah, you are here, yes. So we begin to talk, she begin, we begin to talk. And she received a call. The moment she received a call, hello, 
She said hello, hello, because the phone was on speaker. She said hello, hello, and the moment she had the voice, it was the voice of my father. My father was still alive then. My father said, ah, hello, I can't hear you. Me, that I'm not holding for the phone, that I'm sitting beside you. I can hear clearly. And my mother looked at me, and my mother now looked at the phone. Hello, I can't hear you. Well done. Hello, I'm coming. Hello, can you hear me? She used to style, 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 enter into the toilet. <laughs> Somebody is laughing. My mother, at that time, already have uh, two children. Your last born already have two children. And you are receiving call from your husband. And you are doing hello, hello. You enter to the toilet so that we know here. <laughs> hey Amen. I just laugh. I pretend as if I did not know anything. My mother entered into the toilet. And she was making the call there. Hey, hello. How about you? Have you eaten? That one I said, yes, I have eaten. <laughs> I will never forget. Are you eating? Yes. And that, that one not answer. I said, even the food. My father answered that. The, yes, you have eaten, but the food is not going. That means the food is not digesting. My mother now said, yes, she's eating as also. The food is not digesting. My, mom, my father now said, even I slept, but I did not even, the sleep is not coming very well. And the one here said, ah, ah, it's the same thing, you know. The generator said, it's disturbing me. The AC in the room, they put me, I don't like it. Uh, she doesn't like the AC. She doesn't like the fan. And she said, the, the room is hot. The, if there is fan, there is AC. You said they should not put anything on, but you are feeling... Uh, uncomfortable i understand immediately <laughs> and she now said don't worry don't worry tomorrow i'm coming and my father now said i learned that they said you should wait till next week that you see my mother said no don't worry i'm coming tomorrow these are old men and women they don't live in the same room but the only thing they do is this in the evening you see them they will sit together and they will be talking Bele? How are you? <laughs> you see? They'll be talking and talking and talk. They will talk and talk. From there, the old man will go to his own apartment. When she come out, I look at her. She look at me. I look at her. She look at me. And she now say, eh -huh. I say, nothing. I say, eh, my sister said, you want to be going home? She said, yes. I say, no problem. Tomorrow, I will make arrangement. You will go. Eh -huh. She said, eh, I know that you will understand me. <laughs> I know you understand me. I understood. Because I can hear your conversation. I did not tell her that one. But me, I can hear your, your conversation with your lover boy. I saw that. <laughs> I just come out of the room. I said, hello. This woman tomorrow, she's going back home. He said, is that what you said? All right, but I said, uh, you should be able to confess. I said, no. I don't agree that she should stay one night. Let her go home. It was after she left. One day, me and my sister was talking. I now told her what happened. He said, ah. Hold the old people. He said, but they don't stay together. It's not about sex. It's not about anything. I said, leave them all. They are two lover bed. Everybody know. So nobody can separate two lover bed. Leave them. Let her go. The old woman is still alive now. Men, if you don't manage and befriend your wife now, when you still have the strength, if you think that you have money that you used to take care of yourself when you are old, money will not go to the market for you. Money will not know when you are strong. Many will not sleep on bed with you. Many money will not know when you are having fever. Men, money will not speak that silent language for you. It is your wife. So it's better you communicate and befriend yourself now. Mommy, have I talked for you? My wife. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And last but not the least. Yes, I've talked about this one. You will live the rest of your life together. So whatever you plant now, determine. Whatever you plant now, especially men, women, they don't have problem. Oh. They will run and go and meet their one son or one daughter. They will not leave us to one housemaid. Ha. Ah. Please, sir, please, man. Let's try how to manage crisis. I only reported my wife to somebody once. And what I was expecting, she did not give us. <laughs> we still have uh, only my daughter there, only our first child. And there was the issue, we just married not quite long. And I reported my wife to my wife's sister, the same father, the same mother. But what I was expecting, I did not receive it. So that day, I proposed in my heart. If I can tell my, not that they, they supported her, they did not support her and they did not support me. But nothing came out of it. And when we came back to the house in that night, we sat down. The difference is we are yawning it out and we settled it. And I look at myself. So, this is what we're supposed to have done. Instead of 
And I propose, whatever, we iron it out. When the children have gone to bed, we, iron, we shout on ourselves and we iron it out. Praise it, the Lord. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Again, please, a policeman, let's learn to manage ourselves. Forget about those uh, false teaching, false, those false uh, marriage counseling on the Facebook or the internet. Internet have both positive and negative. You don't know what they are passing through. They will come online. If your husband say yes, tell her, tell him no. Ha! Don't, don't, let's manage you. Hmm. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Or again, to all the women, please, women, hear these three things. Learn to fight for your home and your marriage. Learn to fight for your home and your marriage. Number two, learn to fight for your husband. Learn. You, you must learn about it. It's not something that you just take over one day. You learn. It's a spiritual thing. Learn to fight for your husband. And number three, learn to fight for your children. If you don't learn how to fight, make a good warfare for your home, your marriage, another person will take it from you. Number two, if you don't learn how to fight for your husband, another person will take it from you. And if you don't learn how to fight for your children, another person will take, will take the children from you. Somebody saying, uh, uh, today, uh, these days, when, when, when I see people, sometimes I just laugh. I've seen a pastor who said, All right, my wife has started at least some things too. And I was happy. Why? Because I saw that your wife now come online to minister. So we, we have ch church. So my wife too has started. It's an encouragement. But here, me, sir, here, me, my precisely almost about seven. How old is uh, Kunle now? Eight, nine, ten. Almost 10 years ago, my wife would have lost me. My wife was pregnant of uh, my son at that time. And they laid a, a serious allegation against me. And my wife just stood her ground. It's my husband. It's my husband. Crucify her. We will give you money. Crucify her. We will crucify My wife said, this one already is my husband. Is this the father of my children. 10 years ago. Last month, somebody sent an, uh, is it last month or two months ago? Somebody sent an, a, an offering and said for mama, for your wife. I feel like crying when I receive that. It's not the amount, but it's the pride that come out of it. That you are able to stand and you minister to people and somebody from outside the nation now remember and reward you. My wife will have lost that. Another person will be the one that is standing today. The ministry will go on, but another person will be standing now. But she said no. Physically, she fight for it. Spiritually, on her knees, she, she fought for it. The marriage and uh, the husband and your children. Learn to fight. Also fight for your children too. In the place of prayer. Don't leave them. If you don't fight for them in the place of, the, in the place of prayer, another person, they will become another people's children. They will become vagabond. You will not be able to, to control them again tomorrow. And tomorrow when they are supposed to give you peace, it will be pieces. So please, women, mothers, today is Mother's Day. Please learn three things. Learn how to do what? How to fight for your home and your marriage. If they say crucify your husband, learn how not to crucify him. Even if the man has done something wrong. Go inside the house. Settle it on your knee. Daddy, they said this. Even if the husband lied to you, don't worry. Set, report him to God. Settle him. And your home, defend your home. Fight for your home and your children. Amen. Fight for your children. I have some teaching online. How to defend you, how to defend your house, how to defend your husband, and how to defend your children. How do you defend? How to fight for your children? Almost about 30 ways for you to pray for your children. Some of them, my wife taught me. I have almost about 20 uh, uh, ways that how to pray for your children. Amen. You pray, you lay hand on them on the morning, in the night, on their birthday, on special occasion. Amen. Their room. Amen. I know that you can lie down on their bed. When you lie down on bed, you don't, you begin to pray. And if it's a small bed and you have, don't lie on that bed and break their bed. Kneel down before it when they have gone to school. Lay hand on it. Take their clothes, smell it, it's in the Bible. Jacob said, mm, the perfume, the odor of the garment of my son. Take their garment, speak to it. My wife does something so, uh, uh, last month, I will report you to the world. She thinks that she was smart. 
I me mean that <laughs> it's my area. I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. <laughs> my slippers. I put my slip slippers down. And by the time I come back, there was water on it. I said, my wife, how come there is water on my? She said, I help you to wash it. I I, I look at the old the slippers. It's not everything. It's where I put leg that we have small water. Uh, uh, I say, ah, my wife, my wife, <laughs> you sprinkle water on my. <laughs> he said, no. I say, ah, my wife, my. He said, eh, eh. If I don't anoint your your, your shoe, your slipper, who will anoint it? Ah, I said, wait, well, don't. <laughs> pray see that Lord. So my wife also taught me that to pray for your children, for a nursing mother. When you are breastfeeding your child, don't just put the child there, be sucking, and don't waste my time. Uh -uh. As the other child is sucking, begin to prophesy, begin to decree and declare. When you are bathing for that child, begin to decree. As you are bathing that child, I decree, I declare. Everything that is not, every unwanted thing, uh, as I wash you this off, I wash corruption, I wash pollution, I wash contamination. As you are dressing that child, begin to, to declare, I declare, the Lord dress you with honor, the Lord, the Lord dress your glory, the Lord what about the husband? I just mentioned one now. My wife spilled water, <laughs> anointed my shoe, and I caught her that day. <laughs> Praise it, that Lord. Amen. Daddy's clothes, you are, you are folding it. Don't just fold. As you are folding it, decree and declare. Every food that you serve your husband, don't just serve food anyhow. Serve it with what? With proclamation as you are preparing it. This is the food, the food of honor. This is the food for honor, honorable. This is the food for king, for prince. And whatever, as you eating it, this is the blood of Jesus. This is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As my husband eat this food, every pollution, every contamination, every manipulation, ha, fight you, fight. You know why you need to fight? Please, quote unquote, fight in the place of prayer, not physical fight. When you fight in the place of prayer, the Lord go ahead and set you for you. Battle that will come next year, that will come two years, the Lord will go ahead and settle it. Oh, the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. So, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. I celebrate every one of you in the name of Jesus. Please, let's not forget again next week, Saturday, when we are coming, please come with wine. You and your husband, you come with wine. We take communal wine of joy, new wine in your home, new wine in your marriage, new wine in your business, new wine. Yes, in that home, I declare, I declare, as we come here, Mr. Hammer. You will begin to see that from that next week, there shall be joy, there shall be renewal of joy, renewal of love in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, I welcome us to day 18. Am I right? Day 19. Amen. As I said, the Lord just said, gave me a message and said I should deliver it. Number one, Leviticus 14 40. Leviticus 14. 14. Uh, Sister Sarah, hope I've delivered a message, a good message this morning. Have I spoken for women? Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Leviticus 14, 40. Verse 40. Then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city, within, without. That means outside the city, outside the city, outside the city. He's talking about a house that has been polluted. A house that they, they detect something evil, that there was an evil in that place. And the Bible said that thing that is of evil, the stone, they should take it and take it out of the home. And uh, when God, God said that, I said, what is, what is it? And the Spirit of the Lord said, every strange stone, that means sickness. Your body is that house. Any strange stone, any strange object, according to Job, the book of Job, any stone of darkness in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, any strange stone in that home, any strange stone in that your business, any strange stone in that factory, any strange stone in that your business premises, in your environment, that is bringing or attracting evil into your life. The Lord is saying today that He casts it out in the name of Jesus. So I decree, I declare upon you, unto your body, unto your home, to your marriage, to that business premises, to that factory where the stone of darkness, the stone of emptiness are betrothed. That strange stone, that strange object, that occultic object in your house, 
in your body as sickness, in your factory that is bringing evil, that is attracting evil by the Spirit of the Lord. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. Right to this state down. Every strange stone, every strange object in your life, no or no, that is attracting evil to your life. Heaven expel them in the name of Jesus. Heaven reject them in the name of Jesus. Heaven expel them in the name of Jesus. Number two, Revelation 4, verse 1. Second message. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And uh, was the voice, the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. The first voice, which means it's not only one voice. The first voice that I heard was as it was trumpet talking with me. We said, Come up either, I will show you the thing which must be hereafter. That means things that will come after. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen next year? I will show you. Praise the Lord. And uh, the Lord is saying, This is the season of elevation. And the people said, Come up either, come up either. Come up in that. God is saying that you tell somebody that according to Revelation verse 4, these are the things that will happen in a quick succession in your life, in a quick succession in your marriage. Number one, doors will open. Doors, not just one door, doors will open. And that will lead to you making decisions on which one should you take because you need to take just one option. Out of all the options that will be on ground, there's going to be doors that is going to open, but you need option that will be option. You need to take one so that you don't take the wrong counsel, so that you don't take the wrong decision, so that you don't take the wrong step. Hear me, the voice of the Lord, you that person. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, after the multitude of the counsel, the very first one, the very first one, that one will not look real, that one will not look good. That one will not look palatable. That one will not be clear. That one will not look sweet. Every other people will reject that one. But there is, and that one is the very first option. It's the very first alternative that you have. Is After that one, there are many other alternatives. There are many other options. But the very first option. The very first option. I repeat again. So that you don't take a wrong step. The very first option. Maybe your own is a, a job. Maybe it's a living. I don't know. But what the Lord told me is it as a season of elevation, doors will open, but they are going to be, you need to take option because there are many on ground. But the very first one, maybe you are already in that position. You don't know what step to take. Should I take this? Should I take this? Should I take this? There are options on ground. But the Spirit of the Lord said, I should tell you, the very first, that very first option before other alternative. Which was not good, which did not look good, which was not on palatable, God said you should go for that one. And uh, from that one, the Lord said, I should tell you, the promotion will come out of that one and it will lead to generational blessing. You, that person, I declare, I declare grace to hear, grace to abide, grace not to miss it. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Number three message Joshua 13, verse 1. Joshua. 13 verse 1 Joshua chapter 13 verse 1 Joshua chapter 13 verse 1 The first one Leviticus 14 40 Strange stone that lead to problem God is removing it Number 2 Revelation 4 verse 1 It's your season of elevation And God has given you the step Amen The advice what you should do and what you should not do Then number 3 Joshua 13 verse 1 Now Joshua was old and sleeky in years Old and streaky in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and streaky in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to possess. And the Lord said, I should tell this person that you are old. Physically, by age, you are old. But God is saying, I should tell you, not yet over for you. It is not yet over for you. Because you keep looking at yourself, 
with my age now, can I get it? With my age now, is it possible? God is saying, it's not yet over for you. It is not yet over because I, the Lord God, am not yet over with. I'm not, it's not, I'm not yet over or true with you. God is saying, more ground to cover. More ground to cover. If you are that person, you are looking at yourself that you are old. You are looking look at yourself that the age is not on your side. But God is saying it is not yet over for you because it is he has not is not yet done with you. I decree, I declare. He said, more ground to cover. I decree, I declare. The grace, the courage, the boldness, the strength that you need, receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 You that person, the grace, the courage, the boldness, the strength for your body that you need, for you to be able to go and cover more ground and win more soul and invest more and gain more ground in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. 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 Receive that strength, receive that grace, receive that strength, receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Number four, Joshua 14, Joshua 14, 6 to 15. Joshua 14, 5, 6 to 15. Joshua 14, 5, 6 to 15. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Giga, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee, a Kadesh Vanya. Forty years old I was when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Vanya to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made out of the people met, but I wholly Follow the Lord my God. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. For those of you who are holding on to God's prophecy and revelation for your life, and people are giving you alternative. Your husband is giving you alternative. Your wife is giving you alternative. Your family are giving you alternative. I want you to listen to this one very well. Where are we? Fast. Fast eight. I but only I follow the Lord my God. Verse 9. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet are trodden shall be thy inheritance and the and thy children forever, because thou art holy follow the Lord my God. Verse 10. Everybody. Now, somebody say, Now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Forty years was when he was now 40 and 5. That means 45 years ago, the same strength, 45 years ago, 45 years ago, between when God promised him and now that he was claiming it, was 45. So which means he was 85 at this point. He said 40 and 5 years. He who sees the Lord spake the word unto mercy, why the children of Israel wander in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day, first call, and five years, 85. As yet as I am strong this day, as I was in the day Moses sent me, as my strength was, then even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Verse 12. Everybody, let's read, read it together. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day, give me this mountain today, this very day. Which God had promised me 45 years ago. 45 years ago. Verse 13. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, unto this day because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. I don't know how many years you have been carrying that prophecy, that revelation, but you hold on to it. God is saying, I should tell you, that it is your season for you to possess your possession, for you to enter into your inheritance, for you to begin to manifest that long-time dream and vision. It is your time. If you are in that category for 20 years, for 30 years, for 40 years, or like jo like uh, Caleb, for 45 years or more, you are becoming that prophecy on your head. You are becoming that prediction on your head. You are becoming that revelation on your head. And you hold on to God. You do not miss it. You do not forsake God. You do not look for another God. You are saying God will do it. And if God did not do it, I will not forsake him. God is saying, I should tell you, I should decree his word. This season, 
that you are in, in the name of Jesus, that possession, that mountain, that, that revelation, that dream, in the name of Jesus, begin to possess it in the name of Jesus. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. That your inheritance, the manifestation of that dream and vision, in the name of Jesus, enter into it in the name of Jesus. Enter into it. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you are that person, lay hand on your chest. Say age is not barrier. Say age is not barrier. Say age is the thing of the mind. Say every long time prophecy, every long time pro revelation, say this season, I enter into that manifestation. I enter into that manifestation. And so I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus. Enter into it in the name of Jesus. The next one Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, Fast 14. Psalm 25, fast 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. What is the secret of the Lord? Job 29, fast 4. Job 29, fast 4. Job 29, fast 4. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. John 29, verse 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. So Job here is still talking about it, which means the secret of the Lord is real. The secret of the Lord can be revealed to a human being. Human being can have access to the secret of the Lord. What is the secret of the Lord? Daniel 5, 11 to 15. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11 to 15. There you see the secret of the Lord. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In whom is the spirit of the holy God. In whom is the secret of the holy God. The Bible says, in whom is the spirit. The spirit there talk about the secret of the holy God. In and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him, in whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I said, thy father, made master of the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Those who are knowledgeable, those who have the, the, the knowledge, those who are those who have the power, those who have the authority, they made this man. An head over them. They make him to be their leader. Why? Because the spirit of the Holy Ghost, because the secret of the Holy God was in him. And what is the secret? Light, understanding, wisdom of the gods. Verse 12. For as much as excellent spirit, somebody says excellent spirit, and knowledge, and understanding, and interpreting of dreams, and showing of our sentences. And the serving doubt were found in the same Daniel, in whom the king named Bethsaida. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the uh, interpretation. Verse 13. Then was Daniel brought before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, saying, I doubt Daniel, which had. I've just close. Where are we? Sorry. My hand press it. Daniel. Daniel what? Daniel 5. Verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, I doubt that Daniel, which out of the children of captivity of Judah, in whom the king my father brought out of the jewelry. And they brought him before the king. Instead of the king to listen to him, the king first of all rubbish him. Are you Daniel, ordinary slave, that my father brought, capture you and your entire family? Are you one of those useless slaves? Instead of him to listen, he said of him to be humble. Are you one of them? Verse 14. I have even heard of thee that the Spirit of God is in thee, 
that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, and they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation but thou. But they could not. They are brought good people, they are brought knowledge people, they are brought men of understanding, they are brought people that are that, that are sponsored, they are brought prophets before me, but they could not solve it. But you ordinary slave, that they say you have the secret of the Lord. Can you do it? I've heard about you. Verse 17, Daniel laughed. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gift, whatever you will give me as a result of this, let it be with you. But we may know to you the secret of the Lord, what the Lord God has meant. The secret of the Lord. The secret of the Lord. He talked about light when there are darkness. The secret of the Lord. He talked about wisdom. He talked about understanding. He talked about the spirit, the excellent spirit. He talked about knowledge. He talked about understanding. Interpreting of dreams. Add sentence, add things. They will just call you to come and solve it. And you enter there, you just solve it for them. You solve it as if you are playing. Problem that people are not able to solve in your family. You just appear and you just solve them. As if, as if you are playing. It's not costing you anything. What is the meaning? When you have the secret of the Lord in you, the Lord makes you a solution provider to your generation. Because you have the wisdom, you have the knowledge, you have the interpretation, the light of God will be in you. When you appear in a place, darkness will visit away. When there is darkness in marriage, when you appear there, you are because you are the light, you tell them what to do, and the light of God through you will radiate there. That is the secret of the Lord. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that today I should decree upon you the secret of the Lord. Let it be revealed for those of you who need, who are crying, that your desire is for you to have that secret of the Lord. To have the knowledge of the Lord. To have the light of God. Because you want God to make you a solution provider to your generation, to your family, to your environment. You want to have the spirit of wisdom so that when problems arose, you'll be able to solve them without sweat and struggle. If you are in that category, lift up your hand. I declare, I declare upon you that in the name of Jesus, the secret of the Lord, let it be revealed unto you in the name of Jesus. Let it be revealed unto you. Let it be revealed unto you. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secrets of the, the secret belong to God. But those that, be, those that belong to men, he show it unto them. The secret belong to, unto God. But those that he show unto men, it belong to men. You that person, that that is your desire. You want to be known things. You want to be, have a spiritual input. Spiritual, your spiritual muscle, you want God to increase it. So that... You'll be able to see into the spirit realm. You'll be able to hear God concerning your life, concerning your marriage, concerning your business, concerning your career. If you are that person, I decree, I declare the spirit of the Almighty God, the wisdom of the Almighty God, the secret of the Almighty God, the excellent spirit of God. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Let it rest upon you. 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 Let it rest upon you from today. The spirit of the Almighty God, let it begin to guide you in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to guide you. 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 Let it begin to guide you in the name of Jesus. The next one. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. If you have made a mistake in the life and it has caused trouble to your life and you are inside that trouble, please come near. Come near me now. If you are entered into an error, you have committed an error, and you are into a problem or manipulation of certain as a result of one mistake or the other, one mistake or error that you committed some years ago, please increase the volume. Increase the volume of your phone now. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, chapter 10, please. 5 to 7. You are into a problem. There are crises in your home. There are crises in your marriage. There are crises concerning the work of your hand. And you know very well it's as a result of that blunder some years ago. Have you increased the volume? Have you increased the volume? Can we read? Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. There is an evil 
we shall have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low places. Folly, a foolish person, a non-entity, somebody who, don't, who cannot imagine by himself, somebody who cannot think by himself, somebody who always, who always commit blunder, is sitting where? Is sitting in the place of dignity. And those who are rich, those who are honored people, the Bible says they are sitting on the, in the low place. Verse 7, I have seen servants upon horses, and I have seen priests walking as servants on the earth. Is that not an error? A servant is riding on us, and a prince, somebody that's supposed to be on that us, is now walking barefooted. Is that not an error? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Verse 5, is that not an error? He said, I have seen error which proceeded from the ruler. I have seen a great evil under the sun. Is it not evil? God has created you to be prince, to be noble, to be alive. But your life is walking barefooted. You are walking where those who are to be your servants, they are riding on horses. I believe we understand this. I believe we understand this. We simply mean, you look at people who don't have up to 1% of what you have. You look at people who don't have 1% of your certificate. You look at people who don't have 1% one, 1 of your qualification. You see them up there. And you that you are supposed to be up there, you are grand. You are grand. That is an error. That is a mistake. I don't want to know what caused it. Maybe you caused it yourself out of disobedience, out of taking a wrong decision, or somebody, your husband, your wife took a wrong decision, and as a result of that, that problem, that crisis is in your life. But hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The Lord is saying, I should tell you today, that error, that mistake, the Lord bring correction in the name of Jesus. That error, that mistake that has granted you, that has set, that has put barrier upon you, that error, that mistake that has that have kept you today. A correction, divine correction is coming in the name of Jesus. If it's your marriage, receive correction. If it's your business, receive correction. Here, Mr. Here, man, there are some mistakes and errors that we committed. And one cannot live with them. And one cannot go out with them. So one life is just a life full of pain. Somebody that married is our enemy. You want to come out of the marriage? Or you want to stay inside that marriage? Praise the Lord. You embark on a journey. You get you, they employ you in a job, and that job, yes, you are getting money, something to feed yourself, but it's not giving you comfort. If you go, if you leave the job, there won't be food for you and your family. If you stay there, there are pains. You leave, you leave that job, there's no food for you. You stay there, you are staying inside pain. Is it not an here, Mr. Hammer? Every error, every mistake. In your life, in the name of Jesus, heaven correct it. In the name of Jesus, heaven correct it. Heaven correct it. Heaven correct it. Acts chapter nine in the book of Acts, Acts chapter nine. Saul was going to Damascus with a bad vision, with a letter of error. But what happened to him? God met him on his way. He got to Damascus with another vision. The vision was corrected. As many of you have embarked on a journey, but that journey is causing you pain and affliction, you know that you cannot step down, you cannot go back, you cannot, there's nothing you can do, it's just for you to continue with that pain. Here, me, sir, hear me, man. Saul continued the journey. Saul got to Damascus, but with a new vision. The letter was corrected. The vision was corrected. He was going there before with the vision to go and kill. But God changed it on getting there. Instead of killing people, he now became an apostle. One that gathered. One that brought people onto Christ. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Every vision that you are carrying that are hero and is bringing problem into your life. Today, I decree, I declare, let there be correction in the name of Jesus. Let there be correction. Let there be correction. Let there be correction in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hand as you run up. Every error in your life, 
every mistake in your life that has turned your prince to a servant, that make your king to not be a, a servant. Today, heaven correct it in the name of Jesus. Every error in your life that have turned you to a beggarly element. You do, if you don't beg, you cannot live. You beg to live. You beg to survive. Hear me and hear me very well. In the name of Jesus, by the right hand of God, heaven correct it in the name of Jesus. Every error in your life that have turned your priesthood has turned into servitude. That have turned into servant to slave to, to, to slavehood. I declare, I declare, in that slavery, let the Lord God turn it around for your good in the name of Jesus. Joseph was sentenced to prison, but in that prison, the Lord turned it around and he became a noble. He became an ally. He became the second one in position in the whole world at that time. I decree, I declare, whatever error that has entered into your life, entered into your home, entered into your marriage, and have turned your life around to slavery today, let the Lord God reverse it in the name of Jesus. Heavy error that is making you to live the opposite of who you are. Every mistake that enters into your life, either through your parents, while you are still small, whatever error that enters into your life, and today you are living the opposite of the creation, the real thing that God created. Today, I declare, I declare, let there be correction in the name of Jesus. You, that person, hear this. He said, You are mothers of nation, but you are living a barren life. You are mother of nation. That means you are by now supposed to have given back to children. But your life is, you are living a barren life. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. I decree, I declare. Defy correction in the name of Jesus. Defy correction. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every wrong step. Every wrong vision. Every wrong journey. Let that be defy correction in the name of Jesus. Let that be defy correction in the name of Jesus. Let that be defy correction in the name of Jesus. And last but not the least, I decree, I declare, every ruining storm, the last one, every ruining storm in your home, right now, right now, right now, right now, that affliction in the home, today I declare, I declare, peace be still in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, we are praying. If you know you have been blessed today, you know God has spoken to you. You know you have received confirmation of your own word. Why not just lift up your hand? celebrate god give god thanks give god praise let's worship him let's adore him whatever is your own there begin to claim it if you are the one that god is putting an end to that storm in your home why not lift up your hand and celebrate god if you are the one that that mistake and error that is causing you causing your life if you know that god is correcting it lift up your hand and give him thanks. if you know you are the one that the secret of the lord shall be revealed shall be placed upon you shall be revealed unto you why not just lift up your hand and appreciate god if you are that person you are hold but god is saying it's not yet over for you that you have just begun a new season a new life in your life why not just lift up your hand and appreciate god if you are that person that you have been carrying prophets and revelation for ages and you know that this season you are entering into the manifestation of that vision why not just lift up your hand i appreciate god you are that person you are entering into a season of elevation your season of promotion why not just lift god up your hand and say thank you jesus you are that person there are strange objects in your life, strange objects in your body, strange objects in your home, strange objects in your marriage, strange objects where you walk, and you know that strange object is the one causing affliction. And today you know that God is exposing and is removing it. Sickness shall be far away from you. Crisis shall be far away from your home. Crisis and affliction shall be far away from your business. Why not just lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today. In Jesus' name, we are pray. Lift up your prayer request. Your prayer request and your mantle lift it up. I speak to you into that prayer request in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Peace of God upon it in the name of Jesus. The breath of God for testimony. The breath of God for life. The breath of God for testimony. The breath of God for life. Let it come upon it in the name of Jesus. That mantle in your hand become the mantle of fire. 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 
that mantle in your hand in the name of Jesus. Let it become the mantle of fire in the name of Jesus. The Lord breathe upon it. As you put it on your body, those of you who are sick, healing shall be transferred, healing grace shall be transferred to your body in the name of Jesus. That house where you enter with that mantle, in the name of Jesus, darkness shall be far away from it in the name of Jesus. That business, as you enter into that business, in the name of Jesus, every storm, every boastful thing in that hole, in the name of Jesus, that money, the Lord said to it, the Lord silent them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. For those of you partner with us, with your seed, with your tithe, with your offering, I decree, I declare, peace of the Almighty God upon you in the name of Jesus. The testimony of the Almighty God, let it begin to speak in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone among you that you have lost something? You have lost glory. The glory of your business has been lost. The honor of your marriage has been lost. The joy of your marriage has been lost. The joy of that business has been lost. Among those of you who send in your seed, your tithe, your offering to this ministry, the prophet said, where did you lose it? And he went there and he put his, 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 his rod there. And what happened? The iron head swim up. Iron will never float on the water, but we go down. But by the prophetic mantle, what he lost must be recovered. And it was recovered. Every one of you, I decree, I declare, whatever good things of life that you're supposed to be enjoying now, that you have lost, that the enemy have taken, that the enemy have diverted, I decree, I declare, from that place that you lost them, recover them back in the name of Jesus. Recover them, 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 recover them in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I say, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, happy mothers to every mothers and mothers to be in the house. May the Lord God bless and reward your labor in the name of Jesus. Till we meet again tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday, day 20 of this program. Amen. And don't forget, every Monday, 5 a.m., we come online to decree into the week. As you join me tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., as you come to decree into the day, into the day, into the week, or during the prayer of our lunch, 12 o'clock tomorrow. Go forth from this time henceforth and begin to enjoy the fulfillment, the manifestation of God's promise for your life. Jesus' name. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Dear father, mother, uncle, auntie, married, single, boy, girl, man, woman, brother, sister, and friend. You and I will one day leave this world and our spirit will appear on the other side. Will you be allowed to enter heaven? The only way to enter heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk in righteousness. If you have not given your life to Jesus or you once did and you backslid it, you started living in sin, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be free from sin right now. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. Make me your child and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Sin and Satan has no more power over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, it's a new day. Amen and amen. God bless you.